chapter two, job order costing. The focus of this chapter is on calculating unit product costs. Hello all. All manufacturing companies need to know both the total cost of production and the unit product cost. During this semester, we will study three costing systems which provide management with this type of information. We'll study job order costing, process costing, and activity-based costing. This chapter and future chapters will explain what each system is, why each system is used, when to use each system, and how each system assists with decision making. The focus for chapters two and three is on job order costing, or JOC. Upon completion of chapter two, you must know one, the reason behind the use of job order cost systems, two, the role played by materials inventory, work and process inventory, and finished goods inventory during the production process. Three, how to determine manufacturing overhead by calculating plant-wide in multiple overhead rates. Four, how to calculate unit product cost. And five, how to calculate selling price using cost plus pricing. Job order costing is a system for assigning manufacturing costs to an individual product or batches of products. It's used by companies making many different products, each with individual and unique features. It's designed to track the cost of each job as the product is manufactured. Examples of manufacturing companies which would use job order costing include housing and building construction firms, specialty furniture manufacturers, and bike repair shops. Job order costing is not limited to manufacturing firms. Service companies would use job order costing to determine customer costs, such as legal clients, the cost of marketing campaigns, and the cost of accounting engagements. The job order costing system determines the cost of a product or service based upon direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. While our focus will be on manufacturing firms, the process is basically the same for service companies. As we discussed in the first chapter, direct materials represent the cost of materials, which can be traced to the product before processing has taken place. Direct labor represents the wage and benefit costs of employees directly involved in the manufacturing process. And manufacturing overhead represent the indirect materials, indirect labor, and factory operating costs, which are applied to the product. The steps taken for job order costing are one, track and trace direct materials and direct labor costs for a specific job. Two, apply overhead to the job based on a predetermined overhead rate. We'll be teaching you this predetermined overhead rate shortly. Three, determine the total product cost by adding direct materials, direct labor, and the overhead applied. Four, determine the unit product cost by dividing the total product cost by the number of units in the job. And five, determine the selling price based on the total product costs, plus selling general administrative expenses, which have been incurred. The documentation used for job order costing includes the bill of materials, a materials requisition form, the job cost sheet, and time tickets. These documents provide the support needed to track the cost of each product manufactured. Tracking both direct materials and direct labor costs is straightforward. Complications arise when trying to allocate manufacturing overhead to production. 
As you learned earlier, manufacturing overhead includes all indirect costs, such as indirect materials, indirect labor, and factory operating costs. So the challenge we have is how to best apply overhead costs to a product so that our costing and pricing decisions are accurate. Before moving forward, we need to discuss normal costing versus actual costing. Normal costing applies overhead costs to jobs by multiplying a predetermined annual overhead rate by the actual amount of activity for the job. The predetermined overhead rate, or PDOR, is based on the projected total overhead costs and the projected production activity level for the cost driver for the year. Actual costing, on the other hand, assigns overhead costs based on each month's actual cost and each month's actual production volume. We will teach you normal costing in this chapter, which means that we will track the actual costs related to direct materials and direct labor, but we will use a predetermined overhead rate to determine the amount of manufacturing overhead to be applied as we calculate total product costs. The predetermined overhead rate is necessary because cost data must be timely, and overhead costs tend to fluctuate throughout the year. The predetermined overhead rate is computed before the period begins. It is based entirely on estimates on what the level of activity and overhead costs are expected to be. The formula for calculating the predetermined overhead rate has the estimated total manufacturing overhead cost in the numerator and the estimated total units in the allocation base in the denominator. The steps involved in the calculation are one, estimate the total amount of the allocation base for the period. Two, estimate the total fixed manufacturing overhead cost for the period and the variable manufacturing overhead cost per unit of the allocation base. Use the formula y equals a plus bx to estimate the total manufacturing overhead. Three, use the predetermined overhead rate formula to compute the predetermined overhead rate. Once the predetermined overhead rate has been determined, it can be used to apply manufacturing overhead to jobs. To apply manufacturing overhead, we simply take the predetermined overhead rate and multiply it by the actual amount of the allocation base incurred by the job. The applied overhead is entered into the job order cost sheet along with direct materials and direct labor to determine the total cost of the job. It's important to realize that the applied overhead is an estimate and will not equal the actual overhead that will be incurred throughout the year. We'll talk more about this later. Let's do a quick example. In our problem, the cost driver is direct labor hours. The estimated direct labor hours to be worked in the upcoming year is 40,000. The estimated fixed manufacturing overhead for the year is 640,000. The estimated variable manufacturing overhead rate per hour is $4. Using the formula Y equals A plus BX allows us to solve for total manufacturing overhead or $800,000. Dividing $800,000 by 40,000 direct labor hours provides us with our predetermined overhead rate of $20 per direct labor hour. 
we multiply the predetermined overhead rate of $20 by the 27 actual direct labor hours worked on the job to determine the manufacturing overhead cost of $540, which will be applied. The total cost for the job can now be determined by adding the actual direct material cost to the actual direct labor cost plus the applied manufacturing overhead cost. As you can see, the total product cost is $2,390. If two units are produced, the unit product cost is $1,195, which is determined by dividing the total product cost by the number of units produced. Finally, if we wanted to price our product based on unit product cost plus a markup, we would simply multiply the unit cost by one plus the markup percentage. At this point, it's important for you to realize that assigning manufacturing overhead costs to jobs does not ensure a profit. The units produced may not be sold, and if they are sold, they may not be sold at prices sufficient to cover all costs. For a product to be profitable, its selling price must be greater than the sum of the product costs the direct material, direct labor, and applied manufacturing overhead, plus the non-manufacturing costs and expenses, or SG&A. It's a myth that assigning costs to products or jobs ensures that those costs will be recovered. Costs are recovered only by selling product to customers, not by allocating costs. So far, we have assumed that a single predetermined overhead rate can be used to apply overhead costs. Doing so is referred to as applying a plant-wide overhead rate. A plant-wide overhead rate is a single overhead rate used throughout a plant. Many companies use a multiple overhead rate system. When using multiple overhead rates, each production department may have its own predetermined overhead rate and its own allocation base. The decision to use a plant-wide predetermined overhead rate or multiple predetermined overhead rate is a management decision. Companies using departmental predetermined overhead rates will find cost calculations produce more accurate results than by simply using a plant-wide overhead rate. So how does applying manufacturing overhead costs affect operating results as presented on the income statement? As we have said, applied overhead refers to the indirect manufacturing costs that have been assigned to the goods manufactured using a predetermined annual overhead rate. While actual overhead refers to the indirect manufacturing cost occurring during the period and being recorded. When the predetermined overhead rate is used to apply overhead to the cost of a job, the amount of the overhead applied to all jobs during the period will differ from the actual amount incurred during the period. After all, the predetermined overhead rate is an estimate that's determined at the beginning of the year. Hopefully, the differences will be minimal at the end of the reporting period. The difference between the amount applied and the amount actually incurred is referred to as either underapplied overhead or overapplied overhead. 
under applied overhead occurs when the company applies less overhead to production than it actually incurs. Doing so will understate our cost of goods sold and overstate our gross profit and operating income. Overapplied overhead, on the other hand, occurs when the company applies more overhead to production than it actually incurs. In this case, cost of goods sold will be overstated and gross profit and operating income will be understated. In each case, management must adjust the company books to reflect what actually took place. You will receive the details on how to handle overhead application in the next video. This slide attempts to summarize the concepts which have been presented. Pause the video to see if it all makes sense. If not, note those items that are unclear and view the concept related to it again. Now that we have been introduced to the concepts relating to job order costing, it's time to problem solve. Hopefully you will find that all makes sense with a little bit of practice. Thanks for watching the video. I wish you the best of luck.